American audience students and scholars here I'm Dr. Amjad Ali in this video we will learn the quantity theory of money how the quantity of money affects the economy is the leading question from the days money become a medium of exchange to answer this question we need a theory of how the quantity of money is related to other economic variable such as prices and income the theory we will discuss in this video is called the quantity theory of money has its roots in the work of the early monetary theorist including the philosopher and economist David Holm it remains the leading explanation for how money affect the economy in the long run transaction and the quantity equation people hold money to buy goods and services the more money the need for such transaction the more money they hold Thus, the quantity of money in the economy is related to the number of dollars exchanged in transaction. The links between transactions and money is expressed in the following equation called the quantity equation. We have uh, money multiplied by velocity is equal to price multiplied by transaction. So we can call it M cross V is equal to P cross C. Okay, the right side, uh, right side of the equation uh, of quantity equation tells us that about the transaction T represents the total number of transaction during some period of time, say in a year. In other words, T is the number of times in a year, and uh, that goods or services are exchanged for money. P is the price of a typical transaction, the number of dollar exchange, the product of the price of a transaction and the number of transaction. Pt equal the number of dollar exchange in a year. While the left side of the quantity equation tells us about the money used to make transaction, M is the quantity of money, V is called the, the transaction velocity of money and the measure the rate at which money circulates in the economy. In other words, velocity tells us the number of times a dollar bill uh, changes hand in a given uh, time period. Okay, let's suppose that uh, uh, that a 60 loaves of bread are sold at a given year at a price uh, uh, 0 0.50 zero, uh, dollar per loaf. Okay, the, then the T equals 60 loaves per year and P equals 0 0.5 dollar per loaf. The total number of dollar exchange PT we get 0 0.5 divided by loaf multiplied by 60 loaves divided by year is equal to 30 per year okay uh, suppose further that the quantity of money in the economy is uh, is 10 dollar by rearranging the quantity equation the velocity is computed as v is equal to pt divided by n we have uh, we have PT 30 divided by 10 and we get 3 times per year that is for 30 of the 30 dollar of the transaction per year to take place with uh, 10 dollar of money each dollar must change and 3 times per year okay the quantity equation is an identity the definition of the four variable make it true this type of equation is useful because it shows that if one of the variable changes one or more of the other variables uh, must also change to maintain equality for example if the quantity of money increases and the velocity of money remains unchanged then either the price or the number of transaction must rise okay from from transactions to income when studying the role of money in the economy economists usually use a slightly different version of the quantity equation uh, than 
the one just introduced here in the previous slide that the, the problem with the first equation is that the number of transactions uh, is uh, difficult to measure to solve this problem the number of transaction t is replaced by the total output of the economy okay the transaction and output are related because the more the economy produces the more goods are bought and sold um, and they are not the same however uh, when one person sells a used car to another person for example they make a transaction using money even though the used car is not part of, of current output okay nonetheless the dollar value of transaction is roughly proportional to the dollar output Let's say if Y denotes the amount of output and P denotes the price of one unit of output, then the dollar value of output is PY, uh, uh, which uh, we have discussed in our, our previous chapter as well. So here Y is the real GDP and uh, P is the GDP deflator or inflation rate we can call it. and Y, P, Y is the nominal GDP, the quantity equation then become as money multiplied by velocity is equal to price multiplied by out, output. We get MV is equal to PV, PY, MV is equal to PY. Okay, because Y is also a total output, V in this version of quantity equation is called the income velocity of money. The income velocity of money tells us the number of times a dollar bill enters someone's income in a given period of time. This version of the quantity equation is almost common and is uh, the one we use uh, uh, from now on. The money demand function and the quantity equation. While analyzing how money affects the economy, it is often useful to express the quantity of money in terms of quantity of goods and services it can buy. The amount MP, M over P, is called the real money balances. Real money balances measure the purchasing power of the stock of money. For example, consider an economy that produces only bread. If the quantity of money is $10 and the price of a loaf of bread is uh, $0.5, then the real money balances are 20 loaves of bread that is at the current price the stock of money in the economy is uh, able to buy 20 loaves of bread a money demand function is an equation that shows the determinants of of quantity of real money balances uh, people wishes to hold and uh, the simple money function uh, become as demand function become as m over p uh, power d is equal to ky where k is a constant that tells us uh, how much money people wants to hold for our every dollar of income this equation says that the quantity of real money balances demanded is proportional to real income the money demand function is like the demand function for a particular good here the good is the convenience of holding the real money balances just as owning a an automobile make it easier for a person to travel holding money makes it easier to make transaction therefore just as a higher income uh, leads to a greater demand for automobiles uh, uh, higher income also leads to a greater demand for real money balances okay while talking about the uh, money demand function and uh, and the quantity equation uh, this uh, money demand function offers another way to view the quantity equation uh, to, su to see this add to the money demand function the condition that the demand for real money balances m over p per d must equal the supply uh, m over p therefore 
uh, our equation become as m over p is equal to ky a simple rearrangement of the terms changes this equation into m into 1 over k is equal to py which can be written as mv is equal to py where uh, v is equal to 1 over k these few steps of simple mathematics show the link between the demand for money and the velocity of money when people wants to hold a lot of money for each dollar of income uh, k is larger money changes uh, hands infrequently uh, 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 based on our V value conversely when people want to hold uh, only a little money case small money changes hand frequently V is larger in other words the money demand parameter K and the velocity of uh, uh, of money V are opposite side of the same coin the assumption of constant velocity okay the quantity equation can be viewed as a definition it defines velocity v as the ratio of nominal gdp py to the quantity of of money m yet by adding some other assumption that the velocity of money is constant then the quantity equation becomes a useful theory about the effects of money called the quantity theory of money as with many of the assumption in economic the assumption of constant velocity is only a simplification of reality velocity does not uh, change if the money demand function changes for example uh, when automatic uh, teller machines were introduced people could reduce uh, uh, their average money holding which meant a fall in the money demand parameter k and an increase in the velocity of money v not less experience shows that the assumption of constant velocity is a useful one in many situations let's therefore assume that the velocity is constant and see what this assumption implies about the effects of the money supply on the economy okay with this assumption included the quantity equation can be seen as the theory of which determines the nominal gdp the quantity equation says that mv over bar is equal to uh, pv we can say that mv prime is equal to pv where v the over bar means that velocity is fixed therefore a change in quantity of money m must cause a proportionate change in nominal GDP PY that if the velocity is fixed, the quantity of money determines the dollar value in the economy's output money price and inflation okay we know that uh, we know that we uh, we have a theory that explain what determines the uh, economy's overall level of prices the theory has three building blocks and the first one is the fact a factor of production and the production function determine the level of output and the second is the money supply m determine the nominal value of output p y this conclusion uh, follows uh, from the quantity equation and the assumption that the velocity of money is fixed third the price level is then the ratio of uh, nominal value of output p y to the level of output y in other words uh, the productive capability of the economy determines real gdp the quantity of money determines nominal gdp and the gdp deflator is the ratio of nominal gdp to real gdp quantity theory of money the this theory explain what happens when the central bank changes the supply of money okay because velocity is a fix any change in the money supply leads to a proportionate change in the nominal gdp because uh, the factor of production and the production function has have already determined real gdp nominal gdp can adjust only if the price level change has the quantity theory implies that the price 
level is proportional to the money supply because inflation rate is the percentage change in the price level this theory of the price level is also a theory of inflation rate the quantity equation written uh, in percentage change form is as percentage change uh, in uh, money supply plus percentage change uh, in velocity is equal to percentage change in prices plus percentage change in output or y consider each of these four terms first the percentage change in the quantity of money is under the control of the central bank the second the percentage change in velocity reflect the shift in money demand we have assumed that the velocity is constant so the percentage change in velocity is zero therefore the percentage change in the price p is the rate of inflation this is the variable in the equation that we would like to explain and for the percentage change in the output depends on growth in the factor of production and on technological progress which for our present purpose we are taking as a constant or as a given this analysis tells us that uh, the growth in the money supply determines the rate of inflation so that's the quantity theory of money states that the central bank which controls the supply he has ultimate control over the rate of inflation if the central bank keeps the money supply stable the price level will be stable if the central bank increases the money supply rapidly the price level will rise rapidly inflation is always and everywhere consider a monetary ph phenomena uh, so uh, this is given by the Milton Friedman, the great economist who won the Nobel Prize in Economics in 1976. The quantity theory of money leads us to agree that the growth in the quantity of money is the primary determinant of inflation rate. Yet Friedman claim is, uh, is, uh, uh, is empirical, not based on some theoretical background to evaluate his claim and to judge the usefulness of our of this theory we need to look at uh, uh, the data of money and the price so this is all about the quantity theory of money so see you in another video with another video ciao